by designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and welcome to my tutorial where I'm going to show you how to create a 3D juice bottle mock-up using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension. This is a great method to mock up your label designs, showcase your packaging designs to impress your clients and look stunning in your portfolio. If you're short on time and just need the mock-up, you don't have time to learn, that's fine too. I have the OBJ files and the Dimension file used in this tutorial for download on my Creative Market and I'll post the link below. And if you're stuck on a project and you don't know where to go next, I offer one-on-one -on -one virtual coaching where we'll take 30 minutes to sit down, look at your project and come up with a solution to get you unstuck so you can meet your deadlines. All right, with that said, it's time for the tutorial, so let's get started. All right, so I'm in a new file in Illustrator and I have two layers. I have one that's called design where I'll be working from and another called reference that I've placed this image of a juice bottle on and locked it so I can trace over it without worrying about like moving it around. So first thing I'm gonna do is put my rulers, hit Command R or Control R, and I'm also gonna hit M to get the rectangle tool. Um, you can just click it here on the sidebar, and I'm going to draw a rectangle the width of this juice container, because I wanna find the center point. And then I'm dragging a guide to the center so that I can know where that center point is. And next, I'm gonna use my pen tool, and I'm just gonna trace the right outline of the bottle following it as best as I can. I'm gonna also keep, this one's pretty um, straight on, but I'm gonna keep the shift key held down as I draw. And I'm gonna actually put a pin right there um, in the intersection of the base and the wall so that I can make a nice curve in just a second. Um, so if I go ahead and follow this outline, I'm gonna zoom in a little and it's really pixelated. Um, I wanted to find a better image, but I just really like the shape of this bottle. So just bear with me. We're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. And this is good practice in case you get something low res from a client or from your project that you wanna recreate. And um, you just kind of had a hard time. Like you can just use a little of uh, creative, you can just use a little creative liberty here. Um, okay, so now that I have the outline like this, I'm gonna turn off that fill because we don't need it. I'm just gonna touch up these anchor points a little bit so that it's more closely resembling what I want for this. Um, I wanna add a little bit of a curve to these ridges that are gonna signify that twist for the cap. And then I'll bevel with that as well. And then now that I have this outline, I'm also coming back to the base here where I'm going to curve in to what I want that base to look like. And then now I'm going to use this tool, it's under Object, Path, and Offset Path. And this is where I'm gonna choose the inner thickness of the bottle. I think 0 0.05 looks good for the ratio of the design that I have. And then grabbing the scissors tool, I'm going to snip at the outside anchor points here, and then delete that outside path, and then take these points and line them up with that original line that we drew. And I'm just gonna clean up some of the lines here and I'll probably add a little bit of a curve to that too. Yep, that's looking good. And then I'm gonna highlight both of these paths and hit Command J to join. And then you see when I flip from outline to fill, it is one solid shape. From here, I can customize a little bit because there's more glass available at the bottom and I wanna show that thickness in the design. So I'm highlighting these three anchor points and I'm just gonna drag those up to create the thicker base that we're looking to present. And that'll be it for the bottle. For the cap, I'm gonna start at the top and I'm just going to trace the outline of this bottle. And I'm gonna start with just this very basic rectangle shape because I want it to be open just in case we do any um, angles where it kind of shows the inside. And then highlighting these two anchor points, I'm gonna drag these in until it matches up with our design. And once you have that bevel going, you can even drag it further and create one that's a little less uh, symmetrical here. And you can even make this thinner if the lid and the cap is going to show through. So I might do that as well, just holding shift as I'm moving things around though, so that it stays in line. And then these caps usually have a little bit of a curve at the bottom, so I'm gonna use the curve tool again to bring that in. And then if we wanted to create a little bit of a pop, kind of like a Snapple bottle, I'll just add another anchor point and then select both of these and then just bring them down a level. This will create a little bit of an indent. OK, 
Okay, so I'll also make that light gray. The other thing we need to create is the juice on the inside. So I'm going to make a copy. I'm gonna hit Command C and then Command Shift V to copy that in place. And then the other thing we we'll wanna make is the juice, the fill on the inside. So I can start with the rectangle tool, starting at that center guide and drag it out until the box extends past the inside edge there. But I don't wanna to go too far out because I'm about to use some Pathfinder tools to help us curve this and match up exactly with that inner lining of the bottle. Now that I have this rough rectangle that sits inside but doesn't extend past the outer edge, it just goes into the center of the shape. Select both of those and then hit minus front. So you can see the juice will line up perfectly with the glass and won't have any weird overlaps once we import it into Dimension. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of a ripple effect. I'm gonna add a few anchor points in the middle. I don't want anything too crazy. I just want enough of the movement in the juice to make it look like liquid when we add our liquid um, material. And now that I have all these pieces, I'm ready to use our 3D tools. So I'm going to, again, scroll up, but for all of these, we're gonna choose this revolve setting. So once you click on revolve, you'll see that it has created that shape. I'll move to the side and I'll just copy that for all of these. And now that I have Revolve applied to all of my shapes, I'm just gonna highlight all of them, right click, collect for export, and then as multiple assets. Um, you'll open up the asset export panel and we can label our files. Selecting all of these holding shift and click, um, or you could select them all individually, but make sure they're all highlighted in blue. And then click on this drop down and choose OBJ as the file type. And then from the bottom here, click on export. Now, while I'm also an illustrator, I can start to create the labels that I want to put on this juice bottle. So I brought in some of my color palette and design that I want to use. Um, and I'm just gonna style this label to get the sizing right if you don't have anything else to reference. Um, if you want it to just show up on the front side of this bottle, then we can use that center point and see how it's gonna lay. Like I want the label to not go above where this curve is starting because I don't want it to warp. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be a good size. And then I just design from there and make my graphic. And then once I have that design finalized, I'm gonna make sure I highlight all of it. You can group it together, um, but that doesn't really matter. As long as you have it all selected, you can hit right click, collect for export as single asset. This will put it in your asset panel where you can label it and export as a PNG, especially if you want transparency in your design. Now I'm switching over to Adobe Dimension where I'm gonna click on create new to make a new project. And this is in Adobe 4. If you have an older version, it might look a little different. I do recommend updating because there's some cool features and just some buttons in different places. Um, but it, it definitely has some improvements. You can check out my video that I posted about Adobe 4 and all the new features that I noticed. Um, but yeah, we're gonna just start assembling. I'm gonna start by dragging in my bottle and then clicking this button to bring it to the bottom of the space. I'm gonna do that for everything except the lid because the lid's gonna sit a little bit higher. And then it doesn't bring in the name still, which that's one of my big complaints with Adobe Dimension because I spend so much time labeling but I just make sure everything's relabeled and holding shift to highlight all of these layers. Come to the left where the align panel is now. Um, in the previous version, it used to be on the right side, but now it is on the left. So if you've been looking for it, it's still there. It's just in a new spot. And then now that everything's centered, I can use these tools to put our lid in a better spot. And I will also do that in just a second with the juice once I apply the materials. And then once I'm happy with the placement, I will start adding my materials. I'm gonna deselect everything, just selecting the bottle first because I'm going to drag and drop class over that object and then click on juice now that I can see inside of the bottle and just slide the juice up. Sometimes when it's a really close fit, I will come over to the size panel and I'll just type in a size that's just ever so slightly smaller. So for this, I'll probably do like 
4.68, and that'll shrink down the juice just enough because you won't tell that it doesn't fit exactly snug, but you want it close enough. Um, otherwise, the shapes, when they overlap, especially with glass, it can start to create weird smears and kind of blurs that don't look natural. Um, and just to make sure I didn't change anything or change the alignment, I'm gonna realign everything one more time just to be safe. And then with liquid, we can choose water. I will wanna do some adjustments to make the juice look like a cloudy juice. So I'll come over to this materials tab um, with juice highlighted, scroll down, there's material. And this is where we can start to control the roughness of the liquid, we can change the color. And I think I might go for mm, maybe a kind of like green juice, just selecting a green color that is gonna look realistic for like a green apple juice. I just think green and blues look good together. Those are my two favorite colors. And then we can turn on ray tracing to see how that's translating. It's a little clear, so I'm gonna scroll up and I'm gonna add a little bit more roughness which instead of it being totally see-through, we'll make it just slightly more opaque. And we can make more tweaks on that later, but I'm gonna leave it because I'm probably gonna do a test render just to see how that is translating. The last thing to do is the lid, which I would like metal for the lid. And I can make some adjustments here too. So I'm going to increase the roughness because I do want more of like a matte look. Um, and then I'm going to bring in one of my brand colors for the cap because I just think that would be a nice touch. So I have the hex value, clicking on color, I'm just pasting that in and you can see it gives it this nice shiny blue metallic color. And then from here I can just drag my graphic onto the label. And I'm going to drag it down because I didn't want it to curve too far up on the bottle and place that where it looks good. Now let me check out ray tracing and see how it's looking. I might bring down the size of the cap just a little bit, which you can make easy tweaks in dimension. So I'll show you how to do that. So I've clicked on lid and I'm on the transform panel. And I think like 3.7 centimeters in this instance, like I just went down like 0.2 centimeters. I think that gives it enough of a shrink to look a little more proportional to the bottle. So I'm gonna roll with that. And then again, I'm OCD about my alignment. So I'm just gonna make sure everything is center aligned. And then I will turn on ray tracing, and I think I'm pretty happy with it, but it's hard to tell until you do a test render. But before that, I wanna get my camera bookmarks in place. So I'm clicking on this camera icon with the plus sign to create basically a new canvas or a new camera screenshot. And I want some of the shadows to be included in my final rendering. I think it adds realism. So I'm gonna keep the overall size of this a little bit larger. I'm not gonna keep it super snug up against the shape. And then I'm also going to play with some lighting. I love a three-point light. If you've watched my videos before, I always bring in three-point light. And then since the environment is white, I'm going to bring the intensity down a lot on the environmental light or the environment light, just so that it doesn't get washed out in the final render. And then I can rotate that until I like where the placement is. Some of my tools are hidden, so I've moved my uh, program to be slightly smaller. Friendly reminder to always save your work. And I'm gonna do just a quick render just to see where we're at. And I'm gonna choose PSD just in case I like it. But let me just do a quick render. I think the lighting is still a little intense. Yeah, the lighting's just slightly too intense for this. I also don't like how the shadow's so dark. So I'm gonna go back to the environment um, tab under scene. I'm gonna to come to shadow opacity and bring that around 50%. I like a softer shadow, sometimes more intense, it's more dramatic, but with mine, I tend to like a 50% shadow opacity. And then I'm gonna come back to the lights and I'm gonna bring down the intensity or just rotate stuff around until I'm happy with how it looks because it was just a little bit overpowering to where the label was, because the highlights are kind of blown out on the label and I didn't love that. So I'm gonna come back and do another medium resolution rendering to see where we are. That looks really on brand for me. I love the dimension coming through and I think that's what I'm gonna send. You can also create other angles. So if you wanted to create a bunch of juice bottles, um, you could group these into one and just call it bottle and hit Command D to duplicate. And then you could create 
a cluster of them. Um, you could rotate upwards, downwards to see whatever angles you're looking for. Um, but really now it's your canvas to make your mock-ups how you want. Sometimes having them like floating, I think is a cool look where you could have them um, at different angles, kind of exploring the space, making it more dynamic. It's really up to you to create the to create the product photography that you're trying to emulate. And I think that's the really exciting thing that I love about this program. And here's the final look. All right, designers that wrote this tutorial, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below with what tutorial you'd like to see next. Until next time.